Ottawa's Rockcliffe Airport, the recently designated GOC, Canadian Army Pacific Force, arrives from England. Major General Hoffmeister, CBE, DSO, receives a royal welcome from his wife and six-year-old Margot. The CAPF will reach its final peak of perfection under the XC 4th CO, who took the 5th Armoured Div up the rugged spine of Italy. At a special welcoming ceremony in the capital city, Canada's Prime Minister greets the warrior who will help deliver the knockout blow to Nippon. General Hofmeister addresses Canada. I have complete confidence in the Canadian Pacific Force, both from the point of view of control and the force itself. Many of us have worked with American forces in Sicily, in Italy, and in Europe, and have enjoyed the friendly spirit of cooperation that has always been in evidence. The force itself will be composed of experienced commanders and staff. In addition, there will be a large percentage of officers, NCOs, and men who have had extensive battle experience. Across Canada, the Family Allowances Plan gets into operation. For many months, an elaborate registration system has been functioning to collect information on the number of children who will be eligible to receive the monthly checks. The Department of National Health and Welfare hires special staff to speed the millions of forms on their way to every family in the Dominion. Every Canadian child under the age of 16 now receives an allowance from the government. The postman has been calling at every home across the continent to bring the registration certificate. They have been filled out by the head of each family to aid in recording the kiddies in their various age groups. Although family allowances are in force in many countries of the world, no other plan is in operation on such a large scale. The mailing of the registration form means that regardless of race, language or religion, all children of Canada now receive a monthly bonus. The monthly scale is children under six, five dollars, six to nine, six dollars, 10 to 12 inclusive, seven dollars, and 13 to the 16th birthday, eight dollars per month. The cash grants aid parents in the upbringing of their children. Thus, Canada is coming to the forefront of the nations in their fight for a better life. Air Sea Rescue Service of the Royal Canadian Air Force adds airborne lifeboats to their establishment. Specially designed lifeboats are attached to the undercarriage of a plane. A rocket is used to launch the boat carrying parachute. On a trial run, the plane takes off to rescue an air crew who have been forced to ditch their plane in the ocean. The men, in a collapsible dinghy, hail the rescue party as they launch their ticket to Blighty. The bow and stern have compartments which automatically inflate as the lifeboat descends from the aircraft. Methods of propulsion include sails, in case the wind is in the right direction, and twin motors, in case the breeze falls off. Valuable lives will be saved for the Japanese offensive, thanks to the airborne lifeboat. Buckingham Palace is the scene of another investiture in which Canadian Army personnel play a prominent part. The Royal Standard looks down on 24 Canadians who come to the King's London House to receive awards. The famous beef eaters, traditional guards of the ceremony, are on parade. Veterans of Italian and Western fronts receive awards. Topping the list, Major Freddie Tilston arrives to receive his Victoria Cross.
five of the Empire's finest received their VCs at the same investiture. Thus, tribute is paid to the men who carried on beyond the call of duty in the fight to make life worthwhile. Demobbed is the tank whose crew fought it all the way from the D-Day beaches to the German border. Three of the original members of the Sherbrooke Fusiliers still remain to hand their old home over to Ordnance. Surrendering to the 1st Canadian Army, General Blaskowitz is placed under close arrest. Now the German ex-commander awaits trial by United Nations Court as a war criminal. At Esterwegen, Germany, 800 high-ranking Nazi officers suspected of being war criminals are on parade. Before their trial, they parade in front of a demobilization board. They are stripped of their military rank and sent back to barracks to don civilian prison guard. As civilians, they must now do ordinary fatigues around the camp while awaiting the findings of their tribunal. The lot of a German ex-officer with nothing to do but contemplate is not a happy one. General Li Jian Sun, officer commanding the 1st Chinese Army, pays a visit to 1st Canadian Army headquarters. Accompanied by high-ranking Chinese officers, he sees at first hand General Quirar's methods of organization. The Chinese party finds particular interest in the ingenious weapons taken by the Canadians from the enemy. West in a friendly discussion which will help to drive another nail in the plank to be walked by the Japanese warlord. At a United Kingdom port, His Majesty's Canadian ship Ontario takes her crew for a trial run. The new Queen of the Canadian Navy is the last word in a modern, powerful ship of the cruiser class. The men who sail her will do themselves proud thanks to the people of her home province, Ontario. They have presented a check for $5,000 to the skipper to be used for amenities for the ship's company. Pongos, that's Navy language for army personnel, man the dental clinic. Captain H.G. Grant, DSO, commander of the Ontario, takes post at the commissioning ceremony of the ship in Belfast, Ireland. Rear Admiral Bevan comes aboard to officiate at the ceremony. The Guard of Honor is inspected by celebrities, including the High Commissioner, the Right Honorable Vincent Massey. city, the Ontario is equipped with all the latest modern conveniences. When the officer of the day looks over the rations, there is absolutely no complaints. The first patient in the attached Army Dental Clinic is named in the best naval tradition, Nelson. The sick bay provides all the comforts of home. Her decks bristle with pom-poms and oligons, in addition to three triple turret six-inch guns and ten four-inch guns. The new Queen of the Navy is of nearly 11,000 tons gross. Her length is 555 feet. 
Well may her crew of 900 be proud of the new cruiser HMCS Ontario as the command anchors away is given. With 60 ships and two cruisers in Canada's Pacific Fleet, the Royal Canadian Navy is out to help paint a sunset across the rising sun. Bon voyage and good hunting. <laughs>